yesterday we had a prominent member uh, from one of the states whose governor was absent at that flag of, of the presidential rally in Akwaibom. And today we're joined by a prominent member who was at the rally and whose governor has played a key role in the build-up to this day. We're now in the arena of the People's Democratic Party tonight. We're joined by Alhaji Mukhtar Shagari, who's a former deputy governor uh, of Sokoto State, is also a very key prominent member of the PDP. Thank you for joining us on the program, Alhaji Shagari. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Well, it, it was quite a showing for your party yesterday in Akwaibom State. Uh, and it's interesting I'm saying your party today because uh, five months ago on May the 25th, you dumped the PDP. Uh, and I'm just wondering, what changed? <laughs> well, um, I think, first of all, let's talk about the most important issue. The most important issue uh, is simply the outing of the PDP yesterday. Um, I'm happy that you yourself, you have judged that outing as one of the best. Well, Alad Shagari, we'll get to that definitely, but it's the yesterday. elephant in the room and it's important What's to address context? that because a lot of people are still Management. wondering, oh, you're back in the PDP, haven't seen that statement. So it's important to situate it for our viewers. What changed? Why are you back well, okay, in the PDP? Let's, 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 let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. That's, let's talk about that. That's true. I made, a, I made a statement and I said, I'm leaving PDP. But leaving the party has a process. I only made a statement and after that, the leaders of the party decided to set up a committee and the committee met me at home and we discussed the issues. And I agreed with them because when you are wrong, and your leaders come to you and say, look, we understand that you are wronged, but we really want you to forget and forgive. If you are a responsible person, you should forget and forgive. So that has gone, and I am in my party. I did not leave the party. I only made a statement. I'm in PDP, and we are preparing and gearing up to take over the government in this country in 2023. So, so for those you who say that is on the party, I think they are wrong. I know right, attempts so have been made by the opposition party to lure me into, the, into their party. But no, I've been in PDP since 1998. Right. I, 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 I actually was a minister twice in PDP. I was deputy governor for eight years. I'm a well respected member of the party and I have principles and part of my principles is not to jump around from one party to another. And right. I decided to stay in my party. So and here we you're are. saying, in essence, that you are fully PDP and now, and never to dump the party again. Because in that statement you put out, prepared uh, Alad Jagari, this country to prosperity. Right. If you can hear me. So you're saying, essentially, you are in PDP, never to leave again, as you said sure. in that statement. That sure. Uh, you had seized from today. Those were your words in the statement uh, from being a member of the PDP. Just to see to it, that is important. But now to the internal issues in your party. And um, yes, I talked about that rally, I mean, the, the flag off. Uh, it turns out that within your party, from the conversations we've been having with, you know, people who are familiar with the internal workings, there are those who support the candidates uh, of um, Elijah Tikwa Bubakar, his running mate, but not the party's leadership, especially with the handling uh, of some of these uh, issues. And I wonder, what is your position on that? Are you one of those who support the party, full-hearted, and even the candidate, or you, you're wondering, why is the national uh, leadership handling issues like this? Well, uh, uh, number one, I am a loyal party member of the PDP, and I've always been loyal to this party. Don't forget, in 2007, when I contested the governorship of Sokolis, I won the primary with 80% of the votes. A stranger was brought into the party, was given my ticket, and because of my loyalty to the party, I accepted that. So I'm a loyal member of the party. My party has a candidate in whom I believe, with whom I worked for six years and seven months as minister twice. I know who he is, very competent, nationalistic, patriotic, a man who feels Nigerians must be protected, a man who has the experience to do it. And by the way, he's the only candidate in this country that has been a vice president of this country twice for eight years. 
So if you are talking about experience and the rest of it, you cannot beat Atiku. Atiku is miles and miles ahead of any candidate we have in this country today. But the issue is this, our party has a candidate. There are some problems here and there. We are not a party that will go to the marketplace and discuss our problems. The problems are being addressed and solutions will be found and we will go out there and we will, and we will do everything possible to win the 2023 general election. So if you want me to discuss that matter, I'm not going to discuss the internal affairs of my party on television. We will discuss them. We have mechanisms on how best we can, we can resolve our problems and so on and so forth. It's just like in your house. You have a problem with your family or your wife. Do you go to the market and start telling everybody? No. We well, are making Shagari. effort and this problem that we have will be resolved. Well, my family is not uh, pushing up a candidate to run in the 2023 election. We don't have a flag bearer, as it were. We're not registered as a political party. But I ask that question because internal party affairs, yes, but it's out there. I mean, people have access to at least majority of what's going on within your party. They've heard party leaders speak their minds. Some of them, they just bear their minds as to what they think is happening, how they think things, to, things should be done, which is why I ask uh, how your party leadership is handling this as a whole, because you had previously said uh, in that statement, I mean, you, you, you didn't mince words. You said that your party is one party, in your words, that deceitfully claims to be a bastion of democracy, but has instead become a party of the highest bidder. And, and you, you said quite some things. So it looks like this is, might be a reflection of those issues you had faced for you to have released that statement. Uh, just to be clear, can you hear me, uh, Lahaj Shagari? Yes, I, I can hear you now. I can okay. hear you now. I'm not sure at what point you lost me, but uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I'll just take the part where I asked uh, about your party's handling of the issues. On the back of what you had said earlier, describing your party as a party that deceitfully claims to be a bastion of democracy, but has instead become a party of the highest bidder. Those were your words uh, when you uh, said you were leaving the party. And it would seem as though that is a reflection of those issues you faced then. Well, the... Well, the, uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that, yes, there was a problem in the party. We have addressed those problems. What was done to me personally has been properly addressed. I'm satisfied, and I love my party, and I'm in my party. And I have said that, yes, we are not saying that we don't have problems in the PDP, but we have mechanisms of solving our problems. That is why we are PDP. And that is, why we, that is why we are the PDP that is acceptable to all Nigerians. And that is why today Nigerians are saying that they are lamenting the fact that they did not vote PDP in 2015 and repeated the mistake in 2019. In 2023, the Nigerian people have already made up their minds. They know mm -hmm. the party that cares about them. They know the party that has the capacity to run Nigeria. They know the party that has the capacity to run the economy of this country. They know the party that has the capacity to protect them and give them security. They know the party that can fight poverty. And they right. know the party that was able to manage the depth of this country to the extent that Nigeria was not owing a single kobo. You know very well, as much as I do, as much as everybody does, how much we are owing today. You know? So the issue is PDP, we are not saying we don't have problem, but we have mechanisms that we use to solve our problems, and that is what we are really doing. The fact of the matter is that the opposition will want us to continue quarreling. We are no longer quarreling. People have some problems, and they have made their problems very clear. And there are mechanisms and there are ways and means that we are using now to ensure that every problem that we have in our party is addressed. We are not going to allow anybody. We are not going to allow any party. We are not going to allow any candidate. We are not going to allow any support of any party to derail us from the objective that we have set ourselves, liberating the people of this country from poverty, from insecurity, you know, from hunger, from lack of infrastructure, and from so many maladies that are actually uh, bedeviling this country today. So the right. issue is Nigerians have tested APC, Nigerians also have tested the PDP, and mm -hmm. now they know the difference. The difference, like Sprite, is very clear, and Atiku is the answer.
Well, you are, uh, you've been a prominent politician in Sokoto from the very beginning, uh, as you said, holding key positions. So you are privy to the internal workings. And uh, I mean, still on Sokoto, your governor has been quite prominent uh, in the build up to this moment we're at uh, within your party. And part of Governor Wiki's grouse, who is someone, uh, one of the people who have spoken up time and again about the issues they have within your party. And part of his grouse is the way the chairman uh, commended Governor Tambowal for stepping down for the presidential candidate, the now presidential candidate of your party after the primaries. And for Governor Wiki, that was a show of bias, something not expected of the national chairman uh, of your party. I, I know you are aware of that, and perhaps, do you see it in a different light? Well, you see, the fact of the matter is this. Wike is a very important member of the People's Democratic Party, and he's still a member of the party. He has not told anybody that he's leaving the party. He has some issues, and the issues are very well known. And I have said to you from the beginning, I'm not going to discuss on television the internal problems and issues of my party, since the party is making effort to address all those problems. And don't forget, Tambuel and Wiki are very good and very close friends. And their relationships and friendship is so strong that nothing of this sort will actually set them apart. And I believe that nothing will make Wiki leave the PDP. He has said the problems he has with the party, and those issues have been addressed. And I believe at the end of the day, all the issues will be resolved, and we will go to the field, and by the grace of God, Atiku Abubakar, the next president of Nigeria. Well, the question really is, can there be a different interpretation to that act uh, by the national chairman to Governor Tambuwal, I mean, commending him for that move? Is it wrong to think, Wait a minute, that is biased. That should not be coming from a national chairman, especially after such an event, or perhaps it was a misinterpretation of what exactly happened. That's the question. Well, I don't speak for the national chairman. I'm not his spokesperson. And I don't want to come and radio, uh, and I don't want to come and television and start saying whether the national chairman is wrong or right. If I have an advice to give him, and I have a decision that I made in my mind about him. He is a friend of mine. He was my cabinet colleague. I can go to his house and tell him, not on television. Right. As we wind down now, uh, I mean, fair enough. The former vice presidential candidate of your party is now seen as a dark horse in this race with polls putting him way ahead of even your party and your candidate. The Economist recently uh, boosted his chances, saying he's revolutionary, might even become the next president. So with the benefit of hindsight, let's wind down on this. Do you think maybe your party should have you know, zoned this to the south, seeing the amount of supporters gathering the momentum from young people and even polls? With the benefit of hindsight, do you think that may have been uh, the, the right choice to make? Well, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, it's, it's okay. My question is on, uh, well, the chances of a former member of your party, was a former vice presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. There's been this editorial that came out of The Economist, you know, putting him way ahead, after we've seen polls also putting him ahead. And I wonder, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, do you think your party should maybe have zoned this to the south, such that you could have, you know, reading on the support he's getting now? Oh dear, uh, looks like uh, the question is not just getting through. Uh, maybe I shall try this one well, more time. Uh, well, well uh, can you hear first me? of all, since you have uh, brought the issue of OB here, let, now let me tell you this, and for Nigerians also to know, I was one of the first people, Labour leader, sorry, uh, well, if a Labour Party contacted if I would accept to be the vice presidential candidate of Peter Obi. But at the end of the day, I told them that I would not be able to leave my party because I believe in the philosophy of my party. I believe in what my party stands for Nigeria. And I also believe that the Labour Party will not be able to beat my party at any election. What is happening? So many young people, as you've said, who are those young people? I asked the Liberal Party members that contacted me to tell me who really is the chairman of the Labour Party in Sokoto State. 
Who are the candidates of the Labour Party in Sokoto State? Who is contesting for Senate? Who is contesting for governorship and so on and so forth? I did not get any satisfactory answer. The issue is at any point in time, people will say, well, okay, look, this party, this man has come with so many lofty ideas and the rest of it and so on right. and so forth. Nigerians are not looking for lofty ideas. Nigerians are looking for solutions of the problems or the melodies of this country right. in the area of economy, in the area of security, in the area of infrastructure, in the area of infrastructure, in the area of poverty elevation. In well, Alaa Shagari, in we have to Don't run forget, now. Thousands um, of doctors and professionals we, are. We have to run to now. Uh, having to repeat that question really adds and into our the time. Poverty in this country I apologize. I'll have to uh, come in right now. If you can hear me, Alaa Shagari. is at its highest level. Well. I'm These sorry, we have to wrap up uh, because of our time, but really I'd like to thank These you so much, uh, Alhaji Mukhtar Shagari, uh, who joined us live from our Abuja studio. He's a former uh, deputy governor of uh, Sokoto State. He's been speaking to us about the internal affairs of the PDP. I wish we had more time, as always, but we have to run. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest uh, topics, latest issues in the political space. Until then, I'm Kairi Okikyo. Have a wonderful night. Yeah.